Somebody asked me the other day about what kind of camera and so on I use, and so I want to take just a minute to uh, share what, what I, I use. Before I get into that, I'd like to just spend a second encouraging you. If you're a communicator, if you're a, a pastor, I would encourage you to uh, experiment with getting on, on YouTube. I believe this is the, the marketplace, the forum of today's generation. I believe more and more when people want answers to things. Uh, they're not going to ask their friends so much as they're going to go on YouTube and ask a question. I do it all the time. You probably do as, as, as well. And uh, we want good Christian answers. When somebody has a, the, the, the question, why does God allow bad things happen to good people? I hope some Christian, some good, conservative, Bible-believing Christian will, will have a good video that will answer that question. And I believe we need an army of uh, biblical teachers, preachers, communicators who will get on YouTube and uh, will, will communicate the many-faceted nature of, of, of the gospel. And by the way, if you're not a communicator, you're not a preacher, maybe you are a leader in your church. And uh, you could see to it that your pastor, maybe he's a communicator, but uh, maybe he's not a leader and he, he can't get, get it done, but maybe you can. you can. You're the kind of person that if you stand up and say, I think we should get our pastor on YouTube, then you're, uh, your, your people will fall in line behind you because you are a leader. And it may be that you're listening to this and you're kind of a technical person. You're kind of a geek. You're not a leader and you're not a communicator, but you are a geek and you can figure this out. And I would encourage you to go to your pastor and go to the leadership of your church and say, I think we ought to get our pastor on YouTube. And I think we ought to spread the message of the gospel through, through, through these means. And uh, one other word, and that is maybe you're not a leader, maybe you're not a preacher, maybe you're not a geek. You also can influence uh, what is shown on, on, on YouTube, and maybe your pastor can get on YouTube and you have a, can have an influence. And uh, you may not know this, but everything you click is recorded by uh, YouTube and influences what YouTube does. In other words, if you do a search and uh, your pastor's video shows up, and you click on that video and you watch the whole thing, it clues YouTube to know this is an interesting video. Based on this search term, this is an interesting video and the person who watched it watched the whole thing through. If you can like it, uh, that hit that little like but button on YouTube. If you're watching it on YouTube it, it itself, it clues YouTube that this is a good video. If you make some comments down there, it'll clue uh, YouTube again that this is an interesting video. And you may not be a communicator, you may not be a preacher, you may not be a leader, you may not be a technical person, but you can influence the web and you can share your pastor's video and comment and, uh, uh, and, and likes and so on. And while I'm at it, let me just encourage you, give you a little shout out and ask you if you wouldn't mind liking uh, this video, subscribing, and give me a comment as you, as you go along. But anyway, that's a little, little introduction there. Let me talk to you about the gear that I do. My, my background is I come out of uh, wedding photography. I do wedding photography in, in another life. And so when I started doing YouTube videos, I w went naturally to my still cameras to uh, to try to shoot, and I kind of think with the viewpoint of a of a photographer. And one of the things that photographers think about is we want separation from the background, all right? And we do that in in, in two ways. One is to get good bokeh. Uh, that has to do with how out of focus the background is. If you take a look at that fireplace behind me, uh, you should see that it's it's kind of out of focus, and we've had to work at it to get it get it that way because we want the subject to uh, stand out for, from from the, the background. And so that is why I bought about a year ago a Canon seventy. Mark II. This is Canon's uh, cheapest full frame. Full frame meaning if you look at the actual sensor, if you remember some old 35 millimeter uh, film, the size of that the one frame of, of that picture is the size of, of this frame. And generally speaking, the bigger the frame, the uh, the, the the more bokeh we're going to get, the more out of focus the the, the 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 background will be. And so I got the most inexpensive uh, full frame camera, uh, Canon camera I, I could I, I could find. And then I got the Canon uh, 135. 2.0, 135 millimeter 2.0 aperture. And I, I usually don't open it up quite, quite this much because the depth of field, that is the amount of uh, area that is in focus is a little bit too narrow. If you look carefully, you'll notice my shoulders a little bit uh, out of focus. If I move my hand toward the lens, you'll notice it pretty qu uh, quickly gets out of focus as it moves away from me. That actually is a little distracting. If there was a way to get my hand where it'd still be in focus uh, up here, but I could get the background out, out of focus, uh, I, I do that, but you can't have have everything. And so I want the background out of focus. And so we get the camera with a big 
sensor, and then we put a, a, a Canon 135 uh, somewhat longish lens with a big aperture. You could use another uh, lens you could use to get uh, pretty much the same effect would be the 200 2.8. There's some other options you, you could choose, but I, I chose this one. I shot, if you look at some of my older videos, I shot with an 85 millimeter 1.8. It's got a wider aperture, but because it's so close, it, it bothered me that uh, it's like my nose would be in focus and this would not be. So one of the things we're looking for is to try to get that uh, separation uh, from the background through the mechanism of get, getting the background out of focus. The other, the other has to do with the lighting. And I'm going to turn on my phone here. We're going to uh, sh show you some video uh, from my phone. And I'm just ac actually going to put my phone up here. You can see my video shooting my video, all right? So there's my camera. And just by the way, you might notice I've got a little Rode, uh, uh, excuse me back there. Uh, I've got a little Rode uh, microphone on top of the camera. i generally speaking, will not be using that at all. I have another microphone. Let me put it down here. And here, this is also a Rode, and this is connected to my, to my laptop here. And uh, I will edit those together in, in post. But uh, at any rate, this works out a lot better. Generally speaking, the closer the... the uh, microphone is to the subject, the better the sound is going to be. You'll also notice that I've got some blankets hung around. I've got some blankets back there. The table that I'm sitting on has some blankets, and that's because I'm actually shooting in my kitchen. There's my refrigerator back there, and it has a tile floor, and it tends to be a little echoey if you hear that. And I have this microphone close to me, and you notice I have it kind of surrounded by that blanket, and that's kind of to deaden the sound that's, that's com coming around. The other way we create, uh, separate from the background is through lighting. You'll notice I have three lights. These are just uh, regular lights I got at Walmart. I think they cost about $35 each. I would get the, uh, the bulbs themselves, get the brightest bulbs you can uh, possibly get. We stand up, I'll show you what these look like on the, on the back side. This one is actually a little bit better arrangement because of the solid outer of this, uh, of this light, it keeps the light from go going anywhere else. But these others are slightly cheaper. And I put that little fancy little piece of paper there to try to block the light that's go going. Uh, and I got uh, two other lights over there. And uh, there's also some window light. The window light itself is nice, but one of the things I've noticed over the years of doing this is that sometimes when the uh, sun goes behind the clouds, it'll change the lighting. It's a little bit distracting. So artificial light actually work works better. And you'll notice also that I've got those big uh, cardboard things, and those are there to block the light from going back there. So, so that the light behind me when I'm actually shooting the video is uh, is, is pretty d uh, dark. So uh, anyway, that that that's the way I, why I go at it. I think that's everything there is to see about my little setup here. I'd be curious to know what your setup is. Uh, as I've seen a number of these videos from my other people, and they were help, help, uh, helpful to me. And if you got any questions, once again, put them in the comments below. It, uh, it, uh, maybe I can answer your question, and also it'll help me get found by more people. So subscribe to this channel, share it somewhere, and uh, like it, and make some comments. Hope this has been helpful to you.